Do you think I show you that? Show that example to you. Ryan, any idea? Um, Do you think they're related at all? Uh, yeah. How? Uh, you like how you said like you shouldn't distribute it. Yeah, you shouldn't distribute that too, right? How do you multiply these numbers? Three times, two times, three times four. You multiply. How many at a time? Three. Two. So what do you, what do you think you're gonna do for this one? You're gonna multiply two. two polynomials at a time. Does that make sense? So write this down. So a lot of times people want to just distribute this n to both of these binomials. That'd be wrong, right? You multiply two polynomials at a time when you're, you know, multiplying a bunch of polynomials. Does that make sense? So it's like how you multiply numbers. Do you see how they're related like that? Yes? Chris, do you think it's a good idea to multiply the first two polynomials or the last two? Or does it matter? For, you, you like to multiply the first two? I actually like to, it doesn't really matter, but I like to multiply the last two. Does anybody know why I want to multiply the last two first? Yeah. Uh, the, well, the parentheses are outside. I don't have parentheses around the whole thing there. Well, that's not the reason why. If I had a parentheses around here, then yes. It's not because, but it's e it, it doesn't really matter, but to me it's easier because we just dealt with multiplying two binomials together, right? And once we multiply these two binomials, we could just distribute this n throughout. Isn't that easier? Yes? But does it matter? Could I multiply n times n minus 3 first? Then whatever I get, multiply that with 2n plus 1. Would you get the same answer? Yeah, it doesn't matter. But let's just do this first. I like to multiply these binomials first, then distribute this n. I think it's a little bit easier that way. Because otherwise, you're going to get n squared plus, I mean, n squared minus 3n. And, you know, you have to distribute this one with the n squared and so forth. You know what I'm talking about? I think it's just easier to multiply these two binomials. Then distribute this n. Right? Hello? Anybody? Okay. Go ahead. Everybody try. See what you get. So like I said, it doesn't matter whether you multiply n times n minus 3 and multiply the whole thing to 2n plus 1. Right? But I like to multiply the last two because, you know, we just did a bunch of these binomials. Who can tell me how to, what I get when I multiply? n plus negative 3 times 2n plus 1. Gianni, what do I get there? You get 2n squared plus n plus negative 6n plus negative 3. That's right. And when you simplify, it was, of course it's n times the whole thing, right? Yeah. When you simplify, you get n times what? 2n squared minus 5n minus 3. That's right. Did you all get that, guys? And now you, all you have to do is distribute that monomial n. Isn't that easier at the end? Yeah. So what's the answer, Eddie? What'd you get? 2n. Q minus 5 minus 3N. That's right. And of course, I could just. Any question? Easy? Pretty straightforward? Yes? You think you could do this for your homework tonight? Because that's what you're going to have. Okay. Uh, then let's switch your gear a little bit again. And I'm going to give you something a little bit different. Okay. So, knowing all this, now, for example, 5. I give you this. Now, how is this different than all the other ones that we've been doing so far? Alvin, do you see anything different? It's an equation now. And what do we do with the equations? We solve. All the rest of the examples were expressions, weren't they? We just had to simplify or and but this time we have to solve. Okay. So knowing what we just know what we learned, what do you think we're gonna do? Everybody go ahead and try. See what you get. Okay. And we've actually dealt with this sort of equation before, haven't we? Didn't we do these? So the equations? Yeah, go ahead, everybody. You should all know how to do that, okay? Okay, so who has the, who, give me the answer. That, who's got the, what'd you get, Lucy? You got x equals 7? Okay, anybody have a different answer? You all got 7? I saw some other answer, no? Did anybody get something else? You all got 7? Oh, really? Okay, let's see. On the left side, when you multiply it out, okay, I made it, I made it into addition first. Okay, so I get x squared plus 9x plus negative 4x my plus negative 36 equals x squared plus negative 3x plus 5x plus negative 15. As you can see, as I change all these binomials as an addition, each of these, um, each of these, in between each of these terms, there's addition. Mm -hmm. So I got x squared plus 5x plus negative 36 equals 2 x squared plus 2x plus negative 15, right? Uh, what should I do next here? Um, Lucia, what should I do next?
Yeah, subtract x squared from both sides. Isn't that what we do first? So then they cancel out, right? That's a good thing because we don't know how to solve equations with x squares yet. So when I do, I get 5x plus negative 36 equals 2x plus negative 15. Then, Marisa, what should I do? Add 36 to both sides. Or I subtract 2x from both sides. Is that okay? Yeah, I did that first because I wanted to gather the x's. Then when I do, I get 3x plus negative 36 equals negative 15. Then you add 36, right? How many forgot x equals to 7? Raise your hand again. Good. You guys were all correct. Any question? Is this pretty straightforward? Any question? Here? Are we good? All right. So if I have something like this, uh, you all know that radius, because this last night's homework kind of involved areas of circles and so forth. We know that a circle with radius r is pi r squared. Would you not agree? What about a circle with radius with 2r? What, what would this be? Benjamin? Pi 2x squared? Uh, all right, so how many people think they know the area of a, a circle with radius 2r? Yes, sir? Um, 4r squared, or just 2r in parentheses? Yeah, you have to have 2r in parentheses, right? Is it okay if I forget the parentheses around 2r? Because then you would get pi 2r squared. That would be wrong. It's actually pi 4r squared, because 2r times 2r isn't that 4r squared? So it's 4 pi r squared. Did anybody make that silly mistake? Okay. Okay, if you did, you, your answer would not be the same as the one in the, ba the back of the book. So make sure that you know that if the radius is 2r. And so I wanted to just show you. So something like this, right? How do you find the area of the one that looks like this? Well, we don't know a formula for area that, this is number two, by the way. We don't know uh, an area that looks something like this. So what do you do? You basically, yeah? Yeah, what's the area of the two-half circle? That's a full circle, right? So what do you do with the full circle, you? Yeah. Yeah, you subtract. You find the area of the big rectangle and subtract a small circle. Does that make sense? Because it's half circle plus another half circle. That's full circle. Isn't that right? Did you guys do that? OK. Any question? And, and did they want the answer this way, like in 8r squared minus pi r squared? No. They wanted you to write in what? They want you to what? Factor it, right? So you have to factor out your GCF. Did you do that? Okay, they didn't just want you to write down as a difference. Okay, they wanted you to factor these, right? That's why we gave you all these as your homework. Okay, any question? All right. Okay. Yes, question. 